In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up PyCharm with ROS2. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using ROS2 Humble on Ubuntu 22.04. Um, it's likely the same for other versions of ROS, but it may change in the future. So here you can see my ROS2 workspace. I've got some packages cloned into the source folder, and then I have opt ROS Humble, which is where ROS, is, uh, ROS Humble is installed. I have a bash script for quickly launching PyCharm in such a way that I can still use the terminal. This is important because the first key thing you're going to want to know is that you should probably be launching PyCharm from a terminal where you sourced ROS. So I have a, another bash script for setting up ROS Humble. You can see it sources um, ROS Humble from slash opt. It also sources my ROS2 workspace with all my individual code and sets up a few other things. One thing you'll see here is sourcing a virtual environment. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to create that and explain why that's important. So two things that are important here, one is that I'm creating a virtual environment. Another is that I'm launching PyCharm from a terminal where I source all the humble setup. So first, let's talk about the virtual environment. The way to create that is gonna be virtual env, I'm going to call it .vend. I'm going to put it in my workspace, so not in the source folder. And I'm going to add dash dash system site packages. This flag here is super critical. This allows you to access anything from the system ROS, uh, sorry, system Python paths inside the virtual environment, which is not true by default. And we source the virtual environment. So now that we've created that virtual environment, you're going to also make sure to source ROS itself. If you've already built a workspace like I have, you could at this point source this file. And as I showed before, that's what we have in this script here. Sources the virtual environment. That lets us pip install additional dependencies into a somewhat um, sandboxed environment that also has access to ROS. And then we source uh, the humble in opt and optionally your, your current workspace if you've already built something. So at this point, we now have a virtual environment and a terminal that has sourced ROS humble. And we're now going to launch PyCharm. And like I said before, that little convenience script lets me still use this, this terminal. From here, we need to take basically two steps. One is to set up the interpreter and the virtual, to use the virtual environment. And the other is set up the project structure in the PyCharm settings. So PyCharm has actually already found the right one because I'm in the same folder, but in case it hasn't, you can go to the interpreter settings. You can see the options here include the system default Python interpreter, which you could use, but won't obviously have access to your virtual environment. Instead, you want to probably pick the one inside your virtual environment. But critically, you can see that we still have access to all the things that come from ROS. So RCLPy should be in here somewhere. As well as everything else in slash opt, slash ROS, slash humble. So now that you've set up the interpreter, you need to set the project structure. So by default, you're only going to get um, one content root, that is the source folder that you opened. Um, these are some few things that have been detected by PyCharm. They're not relevant for ROS. I'm just going to remove those. At this point, if you tried to open some code, you might see some import errors. So it's able to find RCL Py, but it's not able to find this thing called Victor Python, which is one of my ROS packages in my workspace. So if you control click on this, you can see it brings you to the right location in slash opt slash ROS slash local, etc., etc. And that works because we set up the virtual environment correctly. But this doesn't work. So standard messages import correctly. But if I try to import a custom message type, you can see it doesn't really complete the right things. The correct import would be something like this. But it isn't recognized correctly. So to get this set up, we're going to go into the PyCharm settings and adjust the project structure, which you can find under project, project structure. 
And we're going to need to add a few content routes. So by default, we get the one that we've added via source. We're going to add a few more. In order to get the generated messages to import correctly, we actually need to go into the install folder and add a content root for any packages that generate messages. This is part of the reason why it's considered best practice to put messages or interfaces in a separate package. Because then you can cleanly add the content root for that package, in this case, hardware, Victor Hardware Interfaces, then under lib python 3.10 site packages. If you add this, then this, if we hit OK, so here we can see now that we've added that content root, it correctly imports the generated code inside of the um, install folder. To get the rest of the Python code working, go back to project structure, go to source, and mark as a sources here any folder, any package that contains Python. So this is the case for both um, mixed C++ Python packages, where you're using uh, CMake Ament Python, and pure Ament Python packages. So I've marked a few of those here. Uh, for this one example, Victor Python. Once we've added that, you can see that PyCharm correctly recognizes it. So as you can see here, the standard structure for a ROS package with Python is as follows. The package name is Victor Python, and inside it is another folder with the same name, Victor Python, that is the actual Python package, which you can tell because it contains the init.py. That file is empty, but it marks this as a Python package. And then in here, you have a bunch of Python modules. So for example, mylib.py, which contains some basic subscriber code. That's just as an example. Um, and then we're able to import that and correctly navigate to that using PyCharm's um, control click to, to, to go to source. Now we can test debugging this. Here I'm going to right click and run debug hello subscriber. The code here is just a simple subscriber node. I can put a breakpoint in the callback here. Now that I have that breakpoint, I can go to the terminal and publish a message. And you can see that my breakpoint works and I have access to all of the debugging functionality that you would expect from PyCharm. In this section of the tutorial, I'll cover how to set up PyCharm's remote development and the caveats or tricks that you need or that I use to make that work with ROS development. So this is going to start with just the basic usage of PyCharm remote development. I'm not going to go into all the details here. I'm sure there are other good tutorials on this. But to show how it's set up, I'm going to just type in my SSH um, credentials and information into remote development. I'm going to click check connection and continue. This will try to use information from your .ssh config. So that's why this is working. Download IDE and connect. Oops, got to enter my project directory. This will take a minute to connect and set up the first time, but in the future, it'll be quick to connect. The main problem that we're going to run into, or at least that I've run into with remote development and ROS specifically, is the environment. So when I described using PyCharm for local Python ROS development, I said it's important to launch PyCharm from a terminal where you've sourced ROS. That way, all the run configs and terminals in PyCharm will inherit your ROS environment variables correctly. Doing this in remote development was a little trickier, and so I'll describe the method that I used. As with the normal PyCharm setup for ROS, with remote development, we still need to follow the normal steps for PyCharm development with ROS. So you would go ahead and configure an interpreter and set the project structure, just like was done for local PyCharm ROS development. So here we have the remote development window. And if I open up a terminal, you can see it's put me into the project folder that I typed into in the beginning. This is my ROS workspace. And one way we can check for the sort of setup of this in, uh, terminal is we can grep for ROS. So in the bash RC for this remote machine, you can see I already have sourcing of ROS. So 
So terminals that you open in PyCharm in remote development seem to respect, seem to source the bash RC, and so terminals will have the right things. But hopefully I can demonstrate the problem with trying to run code in the debugger and how that may or may not work. So at this point, I set up the project structure and interpreter in my remote development session. And now I'm going to go try to debug. So the error I get when I try to debug is that it's unable to import this shared library. So this is C++ code. Uh, in this case, it's C++ code that has Python bindings from, from MoveIt. So there's some MoveIt C++ code that I have built and installed and should be able to be located, but for some reason it doesn't work. Now, if you try to do the same thing from the terminal in, in PyCharm or indeed from a normal SSH session, you might find that it works just fine. It only doesn't work in the debugger. So here you can see things start to run and load correctly. I've stopped it there with Control C, but you know things start to load correctly from the terminal. So what's wrong? Why doesn't the debugger work? Well, this is only a hypothesis. I can't confirm this. I'm not a PyCharm developer, but I think what happens is that the run configurations here don't necessarily inherit the same environment from, for example, sourcing the bash RC. And so the trick where we launch PyCharm from a sourced terminal, I don't know how to do that in remote development. So I've poked around at the options here um, and I'll explain some, I'll first start with the, the solution that I've come up with and then I'll explain some other things that I tried that didn't work. So the solution that I've come up with is to make use of this feature here, which says path to .env files, as well as the before launch task feature. So the before launch task feature lets us run some other run configuration before this task, where the task is to debug our Python script. And the .env file lets us um, conveniently set a whole bunch of environment variables. So what we're going to do is use a pre-launch task to run a shell script that basically sources ROS and outputs all the environment variables into a .m file that the run configuration reads. So to set that up, let's put in the location for our .m file. I'm going to put it in my workspace. So right here. Then I'm going to create a shell script configuration that's going to run a script called setup env. And I'm going to make sure that that runs in the right directory. And then I'm going to set this task here. Let's call this setup ROS env. I'm going to run this as a pre launch task for any Python debugging task or configuration. So run another configuration, set up ROS env. Now, of course, we have to create these, uh, this, this uh, setup env script for this to work. So this would be a bash script, and I'll source my workspace, source, uh, I'll source base one. And feel free to set any other, you know, any other environment variables here. And then we're going to take the entire state of our environment and put it into the file env in this folder. Make sure that script has executable permissions. And if we run it, we should see there's now a env file that contains environment variables. For example, you can see there's the LD library path variable, which is actually the specific variable we were missing earlier that was causing this original error. So now we can see that we have the run configuration here for setup ROS environment. If we close this, and I'm gonna delete the .m file just to show you how, how this works. So now that we've got that set up, if we hit debug on this Python script, you can see first it runs setup ROS env, which sets 
up the .m file, which this then reads, and you can see it's all loading correctly here. Before I conclude this, I want to mention some other things that I tried that didn't seem to work. First of all, I tried putting a normal bash script in here instead of just a series of sort of key value environment variables. Uh, that didn't work, unsurprisingly. Um, I also tried just having this pre-launch task source the environment, and that's it, not do any of this .m file stuff. But it turns out that this run here doesn't inherit the environment from the before launch, which makes sense. Um, but I did try it, and it didn't work. The other things I tried are run with Python console and emulate terminal in Alpha console, and neither of those had the desired effect. So one of the benefits of this way is every time you rebuild your Colcom workspace, let's say you've added a new package, the environment might change and you might need to source it for things to work correctly. With this approach, once you've done Colcom build, you don't need to do anything other than run this task. And by resourcing the environment, recreating the .m file, and loading the variables from that .m file every time in the run configuration, it should pick up on things like new or removed packages without any additional steps. Let me know in the comments if you can think of a better way to do this. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.